Let, let me interrupt you for just a sec, because with all due respect, many of your fellows here on this stage have said you'd had to moderate an awful lot of your views to get within the mainstream of the Republican Party and that you don't believe now what you believed when you were mayor. Governor Huckabee, you've been accused of having been a tax and spend governor when you were in Arkansas and changing your beliefs now. Governor Romney, I don't have to go into how many times they've told, called you a flip-flopper in terms of issues and what you believed as governor of Massachusetts. Congressman Paul, respect to you, I don't know that you've changed much except your party. Because economically and historically, paper is not money. It can't be money. It's only money because we're forced to use it and because there's a residual thrust in the pieces of paper that we carried around because at one time it did have real value. History shows that people have chosen gold first and probably silver second. They'd rather have cigarettes than pieces of paper. No, you can't. You can't have a government like this without an income tax, but we don't want a government like this. This is not the kind of government that was designed by our founders of the country. It's not what was written in the Constitution. We've only had an income tax since 1913. But if you want a welfare state, and if you want to police the world and pay for the defense of Japan and Germany, send foreign aid to the Soviet Union, you not only need the income tax, you need the Federal Reserve to print up the money when the deficit uh, is accumulated. So we think the government should be much smaller. If government is small, then you don't need an income tax. On occasion, I've taken the position, uh, quite frankly, I, I don't believe we need the income tax, and we don't need the Internal Revenue Service. If you were president, would you work to phase out the IRS? <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> you have to have a gold coin standard, and any time you quiz or question the integrity of the government, you should be able to take that certificate to the bank and make sure they do have the gold. Sir, if and we don't have a gold standard for our money, could this lead to hyperinflation? No, it, it not could, it is, it will. If we had the proper rule of government, believe me, if we just, you know, basically followed the Constitution, we wouldn't even have to have an income tax. Uh, we would live within our means and we wouldn't be able to print money and we wouldn't be able to borrow like we do. There are 38 million people today that have no health care after the government's been in health care for 45 years. We spend a lot of money on health care, the government today. The price has gone up, the quality has gone down, the distribution has been eliminated. There are more people without health care now since the government's been in the business. Okay, but how you, what do you do to, to get better health care? It's sort of like asking, how do you deliver bread to poor people? How do they get bread? They work and they go out and get it. Services and goods in a free society are delivered by the marketplace, but not by government. So but, if you but, really but doesn't want to help have them, a responsibility to come and take care of them? Personally, we do, yes, but I don't have the right to steal from you because somebody out in the street needs your help. You have an obligation personally to help them, but I don't have the right to interfere with your right to take something from you and deliver it to somebody out on the street. And you have to remember, there are more people on the street today without homes, without medical care since we've been in the business of welfare. So if we want to eliminate most of the people who are in need, you have a free market system. But the question is still legitimate because there will still be some people who will have need. Our answer to that is it has to be taken care of through voluntary means, never through coercion, never through force. Social Security, the people should know the truth, that it's bankrupt and that young people won't get anything and that therefore we should start to privatize it. Are you still in favor of abolishing Social Security? Yes, but not, o not overnight. Matter of fact, my, my program is the only one that is going to be able to take care of the elderly. I'd like to get the young people out, out of it, just in the next generation, because there's no money there. And they're going to have to pay 50 years and they're not going to get anything. There's no money there. I'd take care of all the elderly, all those who are, who, are, who are dependent, but I would save the money from this wild spending overseas. We can save hundreds of billions of dollars and still take care of the elderly. I don't want taxes on the uh, Social Security benefits that they receive. I have a bill in that would secure the trust fund where none of that money could be spent in the, in the general revenues. If you became president, you would transition completely out of Social Security and Medicare. You know, if I can get the people to agree and the Congress to agree, yeah, that would be my program is to transition out because this one has failed. I would cut massively on this overseas spending, hundreds of billions of dollars, and work our way out of it. If there's a threat to our national security, you never act secretly through the CIA or doing anything militarily without the consent of Congress. 70% of our military money is spent overseas, subsidizing rich allies it should be spent on the defense of this country uh, we'd get out of the Persian Gulf we'd back off we'd bring all our troops home we'd bring all our missiles home we'd defend America 
And we wouldn't, any time they threaten us, we'd defend ourselves. We'd have armed neutrality. But uh, we would reduce the number of nuclear bombs maybe by 75%. We wouldn't get rid of them, but we'd drastically reduce them. We'd do away with the confrontation, but stand firm and, uh, and sure of ourselves. We wouldn't go in half-heartedly into anything, such as we did in Vietnam, to lose 60,000 men in a no-win, undeclared war. That is complete nonsense in the result of the Republican Democratic foreign policy of 50 years. And it's going to continue. It's going to get worse. Well, I know that the specific. most important thing for freedom and peace is for me to obey the Constitution. Well, and where is it me, the authority of the Constitution then, for us to police the world? Would the I think when our national security is threatened, the American people have a right to vote through their congressmen for a declaration of war. This is the kind of thing that leads to Vietnam, okay. uh, Vietnam War type wars so and UN sanctions. This is the kind of thing that leads to Korea's, okay. Vietnam, so and useless wars. This is why we did not win the war in the Persian Gulf so and why we're still facing with this problem. So, short so for us to unleash bombs on Iraq at this particular time to kill more innocent people for narrow political reasons, no, there is absolutely no need to cause more bombing because of a very overall flawed foreign policy. How are you going to vote on impeachment? I'll well, vote for impeachment. For all four articles? Yes, uh, unenthusiastically because I think the charges are way too mild. But I wish the Congress would address the unconstitutionality of presidents waging war. That to me is a lot more serious than uh, Monica Lewinsky. Matter of fact, our national security is more jeopardized by permitting this to happen because we're liable to start a war. We're liable to have our military men killed. We're liable to have more attacks on us by terrorists. Our foolish policy in Iraq invites terrorist attacks against U.S. territory and incites the Islamic fundamentalists against us. So why leave them in the region? They don't want our troops on the Arabian Peninsula. We have no need for our national security to have troops on the Arabian Peninsula. And going into Iraq and Afghanistan and threatening Iran is the worst thing we can do for our national security. I am less safe. The American people are less safe for this. It's the policy that is wrong. Tactical movements and shifting troops around and taking in 30 more and reducing by five, totally irrelevant. We need a new foreign policy that said we ought to mind our own business, bring our troops home, defend this country, defend our borders. We lost 900 men in Iraq, over 100 in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is blowing up. It's coming unraveled. We're involved in two countries there trying to nation build. At the same time, it looks like we'll be in Pakistan. It's time we brought our troops home from around the world. We need to come home from Korea, we need to come home from Japan, and we need to come home from Europe. We need to spend all that money here in this country. We should bring our troops home, change our foreign policy, quit these ridiculous wars. We would be safer and richer for it. You, you have a government that provides national defense, but you don't have militarism and you police the world. Maybe we could take care of some people back here at home if we weren't spending 1.5 dollars a year on our militarism. That money needs to be spent back at home and uh, we, we would have more defense, not less defense. You know, I served five years in the military. I've had a little experience. I've spent a little bit of time over in the Pakistan, Afghanistan area as well as in Iran. But I wouldn't wait for my generals. I'm the commander-in-chief. I make the decisions. I tell the generals what to do, and I'd bring them home as quickly as possible, and I'd get them out of Iraq as well, and I wouldn't start a war in Libya. I'd quit bombing Yemen, and I'd quit bombing Pakistan. I'd start taking care of people here at home because we could save hundreds of billions of dollars. Our national security is not enhanced by our presence over there. We have no purpose there. We should learn the lesson of history and the longer we're there the worse things are, are and the more danger we're in as well because our presence there is not making friends the other two parties uh, no longer stands for the Constitution and Liberty and that there's no difference between the two I mean whether you have Republicans or Democrats in office government gets bigger taxes go up the deficit gets worse but when you look at it whether the Democrats Democrats are in charge or Republicans are in charge Personal liberties are intruded upon. We go about the world uh, trying to uh, interfere in the internal affairs of all nations, and uh, we're, we're having e eternal conflicts. And it's unlike 
what our founders intended, unlike what the Constitution said, and unlike our American tradition of minding our own business and letting the people decide what is best for themselves and letting the market work for itself. We really don't have a free enterprise system here. But we don't really have democracy here uh, because, you know, if you're in a third party, if you're in a Green Party or Libertarian Party, you, you don't get any credibility. You can't get on the base. You can't get on the ballots hardly at all. And it, it's very, very difficult. And if the two parties are the same, you don't really have a democratic choice here. So, uh, yes, I think we have a long way to go to set good standards here. And this is my whole argument. I think there's a lot of goodness in America and we should spread our goodness but never through force we should be talking about what we can do here at home to set a good example have a healthy vibrant economy protect civil liberties and have a foreign policy where we're minding our own business but have trade with people and talk with people well you know I, I did that one time in a third party and uh, we don't have democracy in this country that it's so biased if you're in a third party you can't I can't get in debates as a third party can I, I can't when I did it as a third party, I spent over half my money just trying to get on the ballots. So we don't have a good democratic process. What happens if you come to the conclusion, as millions of Americans have, that the parties aren't different? They're all the same. The monetary policy stays the same. The welfare system stays the same. The foreign policy stays the same. They get pretty disgusted. So there is but one party. So people who want to participate, has, you know, they more or less have to get into one of the major parties. I am not uh, in favor of the pay raise. I voted against the pay raise. Matter of fact, I think our pension fund is outrageously obscene and I do not participate in it. But in comparison to some other matters, I think the amount of attention that we gave to the pay raise is probably a, a little bit uh, more than needed to be done. For instance, the pay raise after taxes would come to $40 a week. But nevertheless, I think the point was well taken that we should not be taking a pay raise when so many people in this country are actually suffering the consequence of a decreasing standard of living. Until we solve that, I don't believe we should uh, be taking, taking a pay raise. There's one uh, documentary that's been put out recently that has generated a lot of interest called Freedom to Fascism. And we're moving in that direction. We're not moving toward Hitler-type fascism, but we're moving toward a fat, softer fascism. Loss of civil liberties, corporations running the show, big government in bed with big business. So you have the military industrial complex, you have the medical industrial complex, you have the uh, financial industry, you have the communications industry. They go to Washington and spend hundreds of millions of dollars. That's where the control is. I call that a soft form of fascism, something that is very dangerous. We should be bound down by the, by the Constitution. But the people in this country think we live in an age of relative ethics is what what they have come to the conclusion of sure profess to believe in the constitution but why have we gone to war since world war ii without a declaration of war why do we have a monetary system that is not designed by the constitution why do we have a welfare state running out of control not designed by the constitution you can't pay lip service to the constitution without obeying it and we should have peace and prosperity that should be our goal we in foreign policy ought to have a golden rule we ought to treat others as we would want others to treat us and we don't don't treat others so fairly we treat them like we're the bully that we're the policeman of the world and we're gonna tell them to behave if we don't if they don't listen to us we bomb them if they listen to us we give them more money and it's bankrupting this country because we don't live up to our principles the principles are embedded in our Constitution property and free society should be owned by the people and it shouldn't be regulated to death by the governments whether it's Washington DC or local governments right now we really don't own our land we just pay rent on our land and we listen to all these regulations more people die from the lies government tells they told lies in the 60s I, and I served in the military in the 60s for five years how many people died because they lied us into war how many people have died because of the lies that were told to got us into Iraq and now in Afghanistan our government doesn't always tell us the truth that's how we go to war and that's how we get in they tell you they build up the fear like uh, just like after the crisis uh, you know the financial crisis the whole world would end unless we bail out all the rich people and bail out Wall Street and bail out all the bankers so, uh, but people now, in a very healthy way, are very skeptical of what the official pronouncements are from the government, and I can consider that very good. So I'm known as the taxpayer's best friend. I've never voted for a tax increase, and I voted for the least amount of spending. I am known for sticking to principle and not flip-flopping. It's time we have somebody that they can trust to reduce the size of government 
and really restore freedom in this country.